This conference, this conference will now be recorded. <laughs> the old uh, slow double click there. No, yes. not that yes. I've ever done that. No, no. <laughs> All right. Good, good afternoon. Welcome everyone to our monthly uh, uh, community of outreach call. Thanks for, for joining us. Um, uh, next slide, please. And uh, today uh, we're going to talk about virtual science fairs. Um, uh, and also I want to do a little bit of a, of a recap of the uh, streamer uh, program. Specifically, Jill did a great job of talking about the overall program and I want to cover just a little bit more about STEM specific stuff. Um, and and uh, uh, when we're talking about the virtual science fairs, um, uh, unlike when we've had some of our guest presenters uh, from our strategic partners presenting, I'm hoping that this one will be a little bit more interactive, a little bit more of a dialogue where people are going to tell us their stories, uh, what they've experienced, pros, cons, uh, or ask a lot of questions. So next, next slide, please, Eddie. Okay, I already kind of did the, the welcome there. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, we'll go on next slide. So virtual science fairs, um, uh, we're starting to see um, some of the smaller elementary, middle school, local science fairs are now starting to try to go back in person. I'm, I'm supposed to do one next week uh, in person, but the larger ones, the, the district level ones, um, they're, they're still being virtual for right now. And um, some of the virtual ones have their own platform. You, you log in, they've got their own uh, SharePoint sites and whatnot. And, and uh, that one that was West District, that's the one that I tend to do uh, every year. Um, was that the previous slide or is that the next slide? I'm, 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 I'm lost, Eddie. <laughs> um, they have their own platform, and so I was not able to, uh, uh, you log in, you, you register as a judge or a participant, and and with the virtual science fairs, you have, uh, go go back one more, uh, at the way West District did it, and I'm kind of curious as of, for other folks how, how they've seen it, the student still did his trifold board and he took a picture of each section of the board and uploaded those to the site. He did a, I say he, the student was required to do a 10-minute presentation uh, to present his material uh, on a on a video, uh, and uh, and then there was also the written report along with close-ups uh, of the graphs and and data that they that they had and so there's a bit more work for the student because it wasn't just his presentation board and then a judge walking up and asking him about it or asking him to present it they had to do a formal presentation and they had to do a written report to go with it so we're seeing a little bit more work on the students part because it's a virtual science fair but in some ways that's actually making it a little bit easier uh, to judge. Um, I encourage you if you get the opportunity to do a virtual science fair to, to sign up and volunteer. In some ways it's a lot easier to do a virtual science fair. Um, some of the pros and cons, um, it doesn't, you don't miss work. You don't take off a whole day in, in the middle of the week or miss a whole Saturday if it's on a Saturday. Um, you can judge them at your own pace, and you can judge them on your own time. You can do them in the evenings. Um, you can review one and one per night. Uh, if you've got three or four to do, you can do them all together. Um, some of the cons of a virtual science fair is there is no interaction. There is no dialogue. So asking questions, you're not going to be able to ask questions of, of the person, of the student. So hopefully they do a very thorough presentation or they cover it very well in their uh, written uh, written portion of their presentation. I would say that's the biggest drawback is not being able to ask questions. Depending upon the age of the student, we know that, that some of them aren't experienced presenters 
guest, you know, public speaking is is uh, the number one fear of of everybody, and uh, uh, or most people, I should say, and uh, even over death. So so they get a little bit nervous, and and it's usually when you're judging, it, it's really helpful to draw it out of them, ask them leading questions that they know the answers to, and then get them excited and and talking about their work. So that's that's one of the downside of the virtual science fairs. Now, unfortunately, here. Uh, judging in person, one of the cons of the virtual, go to the next slide, please, Eddie. Uh, judging in person is a little easier than judging uh, alone or at home uh, to try to be consistent when you're, when you're there in person, there'll usually be a judges meeting and they'll talk about uh, some consistency from project to project. A lot of times I'll assign two judges to every project. You might judge two or three projects with one person and two or three projects with another person. And by doing that overlap and that shared uh, judging, we, they try to generate some consistency from project to project. What What's an eight out of 10? What's a, what's a 10 out of 10 worth? What's a six out of 10? Um, but one of the things that they do uh, in the judging form that you see here on the slide is, is they kind of give you ranges. Yes, it's out of 10 points, but was it satisfactory? Was, was it a good presentation? And, and I think a lot of us tend to relate to those uh, terminology versus numbers and having this little guide to, to convert that to numbers. Wow, that was really excellent. You know, we have that phrase in our mind or, or that, was, that was good, that was good. And, and so then you can see that and you can take two presentations that were good, lacked some, some specifics, and one was a four and one was a five, or that one was really excellent. Um, wasn't quite top of the chain, but man, that was a great one. It was really good. So we're going to give it an eight uh, and, and, and it helps you do that. So, um, and maybe, and there's, and there's virtual, there's multiple categories to judge. Next, next slide. This is all on communication is the oral, is the written, is the visual, uh, uh, good uh, good communication. Are they able to get their thoughts across? Much unlike the way I'm stumbling over all my words today. Um, so then you have the originality. What, where did they get the idea for the project? Um, and and oftentimes we're seeing that they're solving a problem at home. We're going to try and look at a video here in a little bit uh, of a student who was trying to solve a problem at home, but is already looking at ways to expand that project in the future and make it, uh, make it uh, more. So originality here. Next, next slide, Eddie. Um, so experimental design. Um, uh, for those who've never judged a science fair, this is probably one of the, the keys to it. Did they come up with a, a thesis? Did they come up with, a, with an experiment or a design that will s give them the data that they need? Uh, I work in Air Force Research Laboratory, and one of the things that we do is we do something called a technical review board. And the purpose of that technical review board when someone proposes a new experiment is will the experiment accomplish what you want it to accomplish? Now, it may come back with a negative set of data. You know, will this fuel work in this engine? Well, the answer may be no, but I tested that it would. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to design an experiment that will prove whether the fuel works or not. Um, and so that's what the experimental design, the experimental approach is all about. Did they design the right experiment to prove what they wanted to prove. Um, you know, if they're trying to prove horsepower versus fuel type, then they've got to do multiple runs where they're actually able to measure some kind of horsepower or shaft output with various fuel types. They can't run only one fuel and then say they're comparing fuel types to that. So that so that's what this is about. And, 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 and we as engineers kind of have a, a good feel for that's going to, that's going to do what you want it to do. Uh, and, and all right. And my screen just went black and now it went white. Oh, there we go. We're back. All right. Next, next slide, please. So in this particular set of, uh, of, uh, 
uh, judging, it was a total of 40 points. There was uh, one to 10 in four different ki criteria. The last one being depth of understanding. Um, what did they learn? Um, did they understand the material? Did they understand the experiment? Um, and that's all based on age appropriate. You're going to judge on a different scale than for elementary school versus high school. Um, and certainly some of these high school projects where uh, the, the one that I had hoped to show you today was was a uh, uh, someone who uh, was going to use a drone to seed a field or seed an orchard and have the drone fly a pre-programmed grid pattern and drop seeds periodically. And, you know, his, his level of sophistication, the one that built his own dynamometer to test engine horsepower, a homemade dynamometer. Uh, you know, much more sophisticated than we expect at the elementary uh, school level. Uh, so next, next uh, slide, please. And you get a you get a total points um, for each of these sections. And now for the West District Science Fair, our local SAME post, Kitty Hawk post, we not only always provide multiple judges for that science fair, but we also give out two. In the, uh, two separate uh, awards from our post. We, we give an award for the uh, best engineering project at West District, and we give an award for the best environmental science project at the West District for Science Fair. And then we bring those students to one of our luncheon meetings, except in 2020, uh, have them set up at the back of the room, and we encourage everyone to come early and stay late and uh, talk to the uh, to the uh, students about their projects, um, and then we uh, go over them and, and present them with an honorarium. I don't know how much, $100 or something for, uh, for, for winning, winning those. Um, one of the interesting things uh, of doing the in-person judging is it's much easier for two or three of the Kitty Hawk Post members to get together after they've looked at not only the ones they were judging, but looked at all the engineering ones or all the science ones. And then we go back into the judges room and we're like, oh, which one did you like best? And then we start looking at scores and, and those kind of things. I want to kind of open up the the uh, uh, phone lines, as they say, open it up for questions or comments. Who else has done uh, some virtual science fair judging? And what was your experience to do it virtually versus in person? Yeah, this is Dick Kohanek from San Antonio. Yeah, hey, Dick. And we, uh, uh, I've done two virtual science fairs and one virtual robot competition. And we have another one that was postponed from last week. Another science fair is coming up on Sat this Saturday. Uh, the science fairs, uh, there was two different systems. The first science fair, the... Uh, the student had to pre prepare a uh, PowerPoint presentation, which the judges rule, uh, reviewed online. And then they were allowed to do a, I believe it was a five minute video on one aspect of their, their, uh, their projects. So you got to listen to the video and then you score them appropriately and send in the, in the thing. The second science fair, and it'll be similar to Sandy's, they use a software package called a rocket judge. And uh, the software package, what it does is it has everything online. You look at the, uh, you look at the student's written project and you grade that and, and typically you're allowed to, it opens up the day before of, the day before the actual science fair. So you can look at it any time and you don't, you can change it right up until the last minute. And it's like a sliding scale. It's, it's similar to the areas that you saw show on your slides, but you can score it on the thing and it's automatically tallied for all the judges when it's final. Then there are separate rooms, virtual rooms, and there's a moderator assigned in each room and at least three judges. And you actually get in, uh, move to the room. The moderator ensures all the judges get into the room when the student is scheduled 
to present. And it's 15 minutes in a room, a room the student gets to make a presentation on his or her project. The and judges that's are allowed to uh, answer questions. And once again, you online as you're going through, you score the various aspects of the presentation. And then when you're done, you, you pick the final submit button and all the scores go up and are tallied and they pick the winners. So that's uh, a live presentation where you're able to, to, yeah, to ask and questions ask and questions interact. Before. Now that now that's, that would be really great. That was the one thing that was missing from the way West District uh, Science Fair was done here last year, is we didn't get any of that live. We got the written, we got the video presentation, just like he would have done, uh, but with no question and answer. Um, interestingly enough, um, several of the students, uh, and and you're right, multiple judges. I met, I, I I may have kind of glossed over that but usually there'll be multiple judges for every project so that you're you're not getting just one guy whose average is you know 60 and everyone else's average is, is 80 or whatever um, what i noticed about the better projects and i don't know if they got some coaching from their teachers or whatever as they went up through the levels but for those that didn't have the interactive uh presentation like you did um the parents who were doing the the, the video of them ask them questions. And when, when a parent there didn't quite understand what they were saying, they were asking questions along the video. And it's it's one of those things where you're like, you're wishing, I, I wish you could ask that question and then the parent would ask it. And you're, oh yeah, that, that, that really helps. I'm sorry, Dick, I didn't mean to cut you off there. But uh, no. tell me about the, 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 the virtual robot competition because that, uh, how does that work? It, well, uh, Eddie was, Eddie went to the robot competition when it was on live. It was a little bit different. What they did is each team actually made a mini competition board in their own school. And they were live, they did a live video of it doing a competition run. Now for the team, for the team presentations, it's like a, a, a marketing proposal. A team builds a whole package of how they how they were organized, what their strategy was, and so forth. And they made a presentation, and that was live. It was scheduled uh, on Saturday and Sunday, and the judges were assigned to be in so many uh, be online at a certain time, and you got to ask the students questions. It was really good. There was a lot of interchange. The drawback of all this is that. Uh, the students, depending on what school they were at or what economic level their family was, they did not have uh, the capacity to communicate. You know, the, sometimes the online connection wasn't very good. Uh, and you would appreciate this, Eddie. One of the teams was a two 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 females, and they actually made the presentation outside in this of this school and the wind was blowing so you you heard all the background noise in the presentation it was pretty it was pretty interesting but i'll tell you the uh, the uh, rocket judge software platform is really good the fact that you everything's there you, you have judges consultation rooms you have the rooms to uh, move to to speak with the students, and you have to have the you always have the paper available, so you can. It's it's really a good system. But what I found was that uh, it's not perfect, and it traps you as a judge. So sometimes your little red dot shows up that you're in the general consultation room where you're supposed to be in the <laughs> special room, and it doesn't move. So that was the only drawback. I missed one part of one of the presentations because every time I went to the room, I was there, but nobody else was there, but they were really there. So it's kind of a software issue, a little software glitch, but it was pretty exciting to participate. And sadly, it's going to be, it's going to use the same software. And what they did is two or three days before the actual event, they had a judge's training session for about two hours where you got to 
he listened to a Zoom presentation on how the software works, and then you actually signed on again in the software package, and and the lead moderator showed you how everything works. So that was that was really well done. So you got a feel for how how it was going to happen on the actual judging day. Uh, that's great. I I will tell you the thing I missed most. I I enjoyed doing it in the evening, not worrying about taken out from business time. And actually several of us from Kitty Hawk Post uh, either called each other, texted each other. Um, uh, when, when it came time, especially to uh, decide which was the best overall engineering, which was the best overall uh, 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 environmental science project, uh, we all threw out, the, like I looked at three or four and I threw out the best one that I thought was there. Um, and then we had a couple of our uh, uh, folks who do judging every year uh, request from the West District folks access to those projects as well. So they could do a head to head uh, comparison. And then we got into a, a Zoom meeting room and we did some conference calls and a lot of email back and forth. Um, all in a very short time to say, you know, yeah, we like this this uh, student's uh, project best. Does anyone else have uh, some comments or stories they would like to share with the group? One other thing, Jeff, was which was really neat, there's a safety factor built into the software, the Rocket Judge software package. Mm -hmm. You're never allowed to go in the, into the, there has to be two judges with the student. Ah, yes. And, Student participation. You cannot go into this room unless there's a, a unless two judges are in there. So I, I like it. <clears throat> that you know that's that's uh, uh, been a standard in the Boy Scouts for a long time. Is is too deep leadership they call it, and and uh, you would occasionally get a text or an email from a from a scout wanting to work on a merit badge, and and you you always had to make sure he and you when you are communicating that you're copying their parents or you're copying the scoutmaster or another adult, someone else that you don't ever want to see a communication go back and forth. That's just you and the student, even though it's perfectly above board, uh, you want to be able to stand up and say, nope, I never sent him a private communication. So that's a good point. That's a, that's a great feature of the software. I hadn't there. So, someone else have something to share? Hey Jeff, this is Tracy. Um, hey Tracy. We, hey, we we've been trying to get information for our regional science fair. We're hoping it's going to be virtual this year, but so far we've not been able to get any information. I mean, the, the teachers haven't even answered the emails from our POC. Um, but I'm I'm you know listening to to mm -hmm. y'all's lessons learned and what you've done, and I'm hoping mm -hmm. we're going to get the chance to do that. That that that'd be great. The last one that that we had, it wasn't the the regional one, um, and uh, the district uh, one, but uh, they sent out a request for science fair judges, and it was it was great. After having done the district last year, we had six or seven of our Kitty Hawk Post members all jump on, and uh, uh, Colonel Sean Moore and I uh, share STEM duties here at the Kitty Hawk Post, and and he was the contact for that, and so he sent out. We're looking for judges, and man, like six seven people all fired back right away, and then a few days later he. He sent out an email and he said, uh, it turns out that they only want one judge. So I took it. Sorry, guys. <laughs> and I don't know why that I don't know if they already had enough or, or they didn't have as many entries or not. Certainly the virtual science fair is a lot more work on the student than building his trifold board and putting on his you know tie and coming to school and stand there to talk about it. Um, the, 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 the amount of effort they put into their written report uh, was uh, was amazing, but it was it was great practice for them to write a report, state their thesis, their conclusions, and and show their graphs. Um, and it was great to be able to spend time to study the graphs. Um, the, the the kid that built a homemade dynam dynamometer out of his uh, uh, he took his little powered scooter. And then turned the wheel with that, and 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 got a meter on to to measure the output of the of the electric motor, uh, turned generator. It was it was a pretty impressive little uh, bit of uh, engineering that he that he did there. So anyone else got a story to share?
Okay. Um, uh, Dick and Jeff, I had a question for you all about this. The uh, uh, with the events that you've participated in, how does the celebratory piece come through with these virtual events? You know, as far as awards, that's um, you know. Yeah. Uh, you, are you able to capture a sense of celebration and, and recognition at the end? Um, we were, we at the Kitty Hawk post were, were not quite as able to do it as we have in the past. So we weren't there while they were passing out ribbons. The, the people at West district running it, it's run out of central state university has, has hosted West district for years you know, they took care of, of announcing winners and things, um, and, and, and passing out ribbons. We did contact our two winners for our best engineering and best, uh, environmental project. Um, uh, we were hoping that was in the early spring. We were hoping that summer we would still have time to have them come to one of our luncheons. But of course the pandemic still going on now, almost a year later, um, so we we yes we missed out on that celebratory piece completely we we mailed them a check and a certificate and said great job keep going um uh and 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 we do have contact information for them i will say in our, in our stem pipeline philosophy those science fair winners are usually contacted personally about hey we have scholarships coming up when you get to that age and oh by the way here's a link to the camps uh uh, application and and we have seen uh, science fair winners that became scholarship winners that went to camp that you know uh, we we've seen them through their entire college career starting out in sometime in in high school so um, Dick what about you was was were you guys totally left out of the celebratory portion because that's a great point Eddie hadn't thought about that but you're right we missed it <laughs> yes yeah, it's not the same it's it's similar to what you experienced, Jeff. You know, there was it's done offline. Either the school makes the presentation, and uh, we didn't we didn't see it. It's not like the normal in-person science fair where where you're invited to the the, the prize presentations. So uh, all we know is we done we did get a list of who the winners were. Oh, okay. Good, good. Yeah. So uh, as that part is totally different than the in-person judging of science fairs. Yeah, I uh, I miss being able to shake their hand. I really do. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, if anyone, if, does anyone else have anything else? Because otherwise we'll go back to the slides. Eddie, were we able to, or, or are we able to pull up the YouTube link that, uh, that Liza had? Um, I do have it queued up, but I do have another question, I guess, for the group is uh, okay. what we're talking about here are science fairs that are hosted by a school district. And we, some of our posts have been traditional judging partners, correct? In, in this formula that we've discussed? Yes, yes. As, now, but as far as you know, we don't have any posts running their own competitions, do we? I mean, I know we've got posts that are working with first robotics with math counts with the psilocybin you know that right it, it's all the same formula we are you know the posts tend to supply volunteers that serve as judges but we don't have anybody that we know of hosting an uh, their own competition at the post level do we the yeah, only eddie, thing eddie dave packard you know, I mean, you, you may not be aware of it. I, I don't know where it even falls in the in the category of science fairs, but the Omaha Post has hosted for the last 27 years uh, a, um, a significant STEM um, competition that involves um, high schools and middle schools throughout the Omaha area. Um, it, it usually involves uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of. It's like a little bit like the ACE. Uh, if you're if you're familiar with the mentoring. ACE mentoring program, uh, but it involves um, you know again about anywhere from 35 to 40 uh, teams uh, from uh, various middle and high schools. Uh, we they 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 begin their program 
in the uh, fall, in, in October usually, after they've had a little bit of time to get together and organize their teams. Uh, the teams work on a design problem of their own definition, of their own choosing. Um, they prepare a 25-page uh, or 20-page, rather, uh, uh, paper. Uh, they, you know, it's, it's basically a design competition. Um, it, it runs the full gamut from uh, we've had uh, teams that have worked on everything from um, um, uh, additions to their high school to, to uh, housing for um, the needy to uh, a better school, a better uh, desk, a better backpack, um, uh, a, a launching improved launching facilities for uh, getting uh, rockets into space. Um, you name it, it, it runs the full gamut. Um, the teams work on, on their program all year long. And then in April, we have a, a, a judged competition where team where groups of uh, four engineering or architecture judges uh, meet with the teams in, in, a, uh, in a science fair type of environment. Um, they present their their oral uh, presentation, which kind of is a reflection of their written presentation. And then uh, they're judged in, in uh, six areas of, of, uh, of uh, um, I don't know, uh, performance, uh, things like applied science, sustainability, uh, teamwork. Uh, anyway, there are, there are six areas. Uh, and then our sustaining members provide uh, cash prizes uh, for each of those categories, and uh, we hold uh, an event in the evening uh, after after the presentations have been made, uh, and uh, we uh, you know we have a keynote speaker. We've had astronauts. We've had uh, the president of uh, SAME there, and then uh, we we uh, we we uh, award in each of those categories and then present scholarships to a couple of uh, a couple of individual uh, members of the of the group so it's a fairly lengthy thing and this year last year and this year we'll be doing it virtually sounds very similar to what you guys have uh, have um, suggested and you know of course Eddie last year we invited you to come and then uh, and then that all kind of fell apart with the, the pandemic so anyway I'm still ready I'm still ready. Uh, you said that was high school? Well, I'm sorry? You said that was high school? It's middle and high school. So usually about uh, about 20 teams or 15 to 20 teams of both middle and high school uh, uh, in the area. So it includes uh, parochial schools, public schools. Um, you know, it's regional. So we get people from Iowa. We get people from uh, small towns in and around Omaha. So. Anyway, I, I'm sorry to occupy so much time on that, but it's a pretty significant effort. Again, 27 years, uh, and, and we were originally going to present a, a, you know, a program to describe what we've done and our accomplishments. I mean, as you can imagine, uh, if you've got 20 uh, students, 10 to 20 students on each team, 35 teams, you've got about 300 students involved each year, and we've done that for 27 years. So. You can imagine the impacts we have. Many of our students have come back and um, and become mentors. Uh, I, I should note too that uh, each team is, is supplied with a mentor who meets with them once a week for an hour uh, throughout the school year, and uh, and then you know again we have a community of judges who participate who are different than the mentors. So so there's no conflict there. So are are the mentors and or the judges all from your post or are you yes, going sir. and getting okay so you're not necessarily going out and getting celebrity judges who are not post members or or they might they might be sustaining member reps or they're 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 all walks of life but they're all post members exactly so yes sir excellent so, well, that's you know, that's it, wonderful it's a, it's a pretty big deal and 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 uh, you know We'll, we'll be happy to share the details with you, but I couldn't let this go without at least sharing that. Well, no, that's that's perfect, and it, and it answers Eddie's question. The only the, the the only thing that I was aware of Eddie was I know that a couple of years back the Emerald Coast Post did a STEM 
day STEM. It wasn't a, a camp like our engineering and construction camp, but I don't know if it was a competition. To be honest, I don't know. I don't remember or don't know a whole lot about what they did, but that was a, a couple of years back. Um, and and uh, but but that's that that's exciting stuff, man. Omaha's got it going on. That's for sure. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, I'm gonna. We're take happy to share. <laughs> well, I'm gonna. Well, take I think step. you need to share it in the STEM corner of the uh, S uh, uh, myself. That's just. Uh... Yeah, well, we've I've, I've I've encouraged that, but you know, it's they're well, busy, I might have... busy enough as it is. <laughs> yeah, I may have to come do some arm twisting here. So. <laughs> well, I'm gonna take it a step further, and I think there is a uh, opportunity here for our COI to create a toolkit for posts on developing a uh, virtual slash you know, in-person uh, competition at the uh, a post level competition. It could be science fair, you know, if, if the school district doesn't have one, but it would be a good complement to the college outreach COI. We just announced our first competition and it's a design project competition uh, that's gonna, uh, we have a deadline at the end of this month for abstracts, uh, but it's only for undergrads. So it would be great, and that's a program that we're you know, uh, uh, holding nationally out of the national office through the COI. But um, you know, we could contemplate having our own competition at the national level for middle and high school that would be you know, overseen by this COI and or there's an, uh, I think there's an um, opportunity to create a toolkit based on you know, definitely what Omaha is doing uh, you know, create a standard that we could uh, train posts on doing their own. I, I will share, uh, Eddie, that, you know, if you go to the Omaha Post website and you look up SIMP, S -A -S -M -P, the Student Mentoring Program, that uh, we have a to an operations manual that gives all the, the rubrics that we use, that, that give the uh, schedule, that gives the, you know, all of the information about the, the program. Uh, it includes synopsis of uh, of all of the uh, proposed um, uh, projects that are that are uh, on on tap for this this coming year. Uh, it gives some past history and and some uh, videos of some of the presentations and 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 copies of the papers that have been produced. So uh, there's a lot of information on the Omaha Post website under Student Mentoring Program. Uh, the, the operations manual in particular, I think, would uh, would help inform people as far as how the, the mechanics of this system. So uh, right. welcome great. To, you, it's all out there. You're welcome to check it out. Yeah, we just need a group to come together, I think, to review all that and, and actually you know, create a, like a task force or a working group on on this to, a toolkit product and see what right. it would take to, to modify all your materials into a, a template. Yeah, okay. that, that sounds that sounds great. Um, does anyone else have anything to to share uh, regarding uh, virtual science fairs? Uh, unfortunately, most of the videos that that uh, I reviewed when when I was a virtual judge were both lengthy and uh, on a private uh, SharePoint site uh, run by Central State as part of their thing, but. Uh, Liza found this great one that she saw. Um, it was actually the, they used YouTube as the platform, which makes it you know public uh, uh, available. So let's uh, let's show this one. This one there's a lot of uh, time lapse in here, which makes it go pretty quick. It's 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 a good video, a good project. Go ahead. All right, we haven't had a lot of luck with videos, but let me see if this goes. You might have to turn it up on your end. Hi, I'm Nan Haligavallo. I will be going to present to you my John Jay SEA Science Fair project, the Automatic Plant Watering System, under the category of Environmental Sciences and Engineering. My main goal is to create an effective automatic watering system for a specific plant, Cape Jasmine, and to monitor the storm moisture level of the plant. The purpose of this is to help my grandpa water his plants daily. We would often forget to maintain it. Before the process of building, I gathered data on the necessities of the plant. 
Cape jasmines grow best in moist and humid environments. The list of materials consists of Arduino Uno or equivalent, breadboard, wires, capacitive moisture sensor, relay module, water pump and tube, the plant and the power bank. The procedures are to assemble the circuit by connecting the capacitive sensor LCD water pump system to the Arduino. To then upload the program to the Arduino via Arduino IDE. Calibrate the sensor by measuring the dry, air, and wet value. Insert the capacitive sensor to the soil and then connect the water pump piping into the base of the plant. Put water into the tub and power the Arduino using the power bank. Here is the layout with the labels of the Arduino, LCD, and relay control. As you can see, this is the automated plant watering system. I recorded the readings of the Arduino and the soil meter for 22 days. The starting date, October 25th, the ending date, November 15th. The soil meter readings are from a scale of 1 to 10, and the percentages are the Arduino readings. I log the data twice a day, one at 8 in the morning and one at 5 in the afternoon. The results from the data suggest that most of the information is relatively synced. While observing the plant, on October 27th, a flower began to bloom. There were no dead leaves, and the soil looked well-maintained. In conclusion, the data has proven that it's effective. The line chart implies that the moisture meter and the Arduino are in sync, meaning there are similar readings, which indicates the moisture level reaches the optimal requirement of the plant. Ideas for further expansion can be an automatic log for the soil moisture through the Arduino, circuit modifications, an app that has a feature to force irrigate the plants, a selection set point for moisture level, multiple irrigation systems that you can network, a camera to record the progress, a light bulb that turns green when the plants are being watered, or program it to play a sound during the process. The importance is that you can build an affordable system to automatically water a small garden. That was from the science fair that I was told the first virtual science fair I went to. That was that was what the students were doing, building those videos from their slides. Yeah, the, the audio was just a little bit out of sync with the video. The audio was coming through a little ahead, I think, but but uh, but it was a pr really nice little video. Um, uh, she talked about there at the end about forced watering the plant, and so I wasn't quite sure if th the question I would have asked was the Arduino simply just on a time basis watering twice a day, three times a day, or whatever, or was there any kind of a feedback loop from the moisture monitor, or is that strictly data she was getting for her for her study? But but it was a great video and a great project. Those Arduinos are are the coolest little uh, 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 devices there and, and and what all they can do. So um, yeah, that was that was really neat. Um, we have uh, 10 15 minutes left here. Um, Eddie, I just want to go over a couple things on the on the uh, STEM uh, portion of the of the streamer program. Uh, kind of recap what uh, what Jill said last time. Um, she talked about how the program is going to work and that we're going to uh, it's going to be a little bit more real time. When you do an event, you're going to upload it right away, uh, not wait till the end of the year and try to remember what you did. Um, and, and we have had discussions that uh, folks from the STEM uh, COI 
uh, will be judges and, and will be asked periodically, whether it's monthly, quarterly, every other month or so to go in and check to see if there's a, a, a new activity uploaded and, and judge it. Try to give people feedback right away. Um, there's one streamer. You need a total of 1,700 points for a large post, 1,000 points for a medium post, 600 points for a small post. You must do one industry government engagement to get the streamer. You have to do something in industry government engagement. You may only get 25 points out of your 1,700 from that, but you have to do something in that. Ne next slide, please. But well, the point that I want to make is there's a lot of great uh, things to do. Uh, this is a page, this is a little clip from the uh, uh, Post Resource Center, and you, you know, click on the streamer program, and it'll take you and you have the streamer planning tool and you have the, the there's a streamer briefing. Jill's recorded some of her stuff that you can go and and, and, and watch that or show that at a at your post uh, meeting if need be. Um, we're going to talk about the streamer planning tool here in a minute. Next next slide, please. Eddie. So, you know, enrich the stem pipeline is goal number four in the 2025 uh, strategic plan. And you can see here, uh, I'm not gonna read every one of these to you, but organize and execute or sponsor and participate in a STEM competition or activity at the K-12 levels worth 100 points. So kind of what, what uh, Omaha is doing, boom, you know, and, and actually we'll see later on probably what Omaha is doing is, is more though there's another one that's worth 150 points, but you can pick out what these are. You know, sponsor and participate might be simply as we're writing a check as a sponsor, our name's in the program. Participate means I'm also showing up and having my demonstration or my booth or volunteers that are, that are uh, you know, working registration or, or whatever that is to, to participate. Next, next slide, Eddie. Um, so I'm not gonna go over all of these in great detail. Objective two, is is growing is all about growing student members um and 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 stuff with camps stuff with uh, uh, uh programs objective three is uh, uh create new post uh partnerships and strategic alliances trying to to work with someone maybe maybe by participating in a stem activity you haven't done before your post always does math counts now you want to jump in on on a, on a robotics team or you want to look at doing something with uh, uh, ace mentoring or something so next next slide please uh, objective four is to align students and mentors uh, uh, so uh, having a mentoring program uh, working with your scholarship uh, uh, winners. Um, I don't know, to be honest, if our post actually assigns a mentor to each scholarship winner, but we do, as a scholarship committee, keep in touch with those winners. One of the things that the Kitty Hawk Post does is we have something we call our named scholarship program. Um, any one of our sustaining members can offer $1,000 for a named program, a Wolpert Scholarship, a Lockwood Jones and Beals Scholarship, or a Barge Design Scholarship. Um, and they use the Sammy Kitty Hawk Post Scholarship team to pick that winner for them. And then typically someone from that sustaining member firm keeps in contact as a mentor and, and keeps track of them and encourages them to come back. Most of those named scholarship uh, recipients uh, receive it multiple years. They get it as a graduating high school senior, and then they get it multiple years while they're in college. And a lot of times that also results in an internship uh, with that firm. Um, and you can see in, in uh, uh, five has to do with enhancing the college outreach and uh, collaborating with them. So next next slide. What I, what I really wanted to show you here is a lot of different opportunities to earn points as a small post, you only need 600 points total. Um, uh, but this is the uh, the planning tool that you saw on that resource link. It's just a spreadsheet. Um, I've minimized several of the ones, uh, but I wanted to show you some of the ones that your post may be doing already. 
Now it comes with the points available column. I'm pointing at the screen again like that tells you guys anything. Uh, the points available column is what it comes with. I added the planned post points column and the points earned column. So what I did is I looked at each one of these and I said, for instance, um, sponsor a camper. We always sponsor a camper. We sponsor a camper to every camp. So there's 100 points. We're planning to do that. When we do it, I'll move 100 points over to the third column. And at the bottom, you can see right now, I plan to earn 625 points for the Kitty Hawk post towards our 1700 as a large post in the STEM area alone. And these are the ones I'm doing without even thinking. I'm not having to plan anything. We're going to sponsor a camper. We're going to award scholarships. Uh, we're going to do, we have a relationship or we're developing a relationship with K-12 schools. Um, we have set up now where we're asking each post member to contact uh, who, who's interested. It's 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 a it's a point of contact for that school. If you have questions, of, if you need a, a a career day speaker, if you need a science fair judge, if you need um, uh, you got a kid who's looking for an internship, if you you know got a counselor who wants to talk about potential scholarships, call this guy. And they're not just going onto our website and trying to figure out who to call. We're going to make those contacts in person, take our card, introduce ourselves and and be the the POC. So so you know that's that's in our plan for this year. Um, invite a camp alumni back to a post meeting to talk about that. We do that every year. We bring all of our campers back. They bring slideshows. They tell us what a great event they have. Um, we, we always follow up our science fair winners, our camp attendees to, to our scholarship programs. Um, so what I'm showing here basically is taking the spreadsheet, looking at the point value, and then just planning which ones you're going to use. We're, having, we're asking each group of committees on our board of direction to do this. We're going to have a meeting in a month and say, how many points do we think we're going to earn this year and where are we going to get them? And then, oh, gee, we're at 600 and 1,675 points. We need 25 more points. Who, who can go back and find 25 more points to, to earn the streamer? Um, I'll be real honest. My, my review of the streamer program, uh, everybody should be able to earn the streamer. And the nice thing about it, this is something that's been coming a long time. If you're a STEM-focused post, you can try to earn all your points there. If you're more about industry government engagement or helping veterans or leadership, you know, you can focus your point, your post efforts where your post has their passion, has their interest. So um, we're going to get 600 plus points in the STEM area just from what we're always do, already do, and we're going to try to add to some of these. Um, I really like that idea of what Omaha is doing and trying to come up with our own competition. I don't think we can do it on the level that they're doing, to be honest, but I would love to have our own, whether it's a one-day competition or or something like that. Um, I don't know if I have any more slides, Eddie. I, there's probably at least one more. Does anybody have any questions? We're, we're just about out of time. Um, I'm not going to go over a whole lot of what you've been up to unless uh, we'll just kind of call it around the room. Does anyone have something for the good of the group? Jeff, this is Jack Tidwell. I'm from the Dallas Post. And, hey, Jack. Uh, number one, thank everybody for their leadership and involvement. I'm uh, uh, particularly uh, – well, I've been on the board for a couple of years, which still makes me the new guy. Um, because uh, the Dallas Post is has a lot of long-term leadership that have have mentored me very well. I um I'm wondering if SAME National has any support for virtual platforms like uh, the full licensing of Teams or Zoom for really um some of the virtual applications you described can be done, but they require a much more involved licensing of software than many enterprises are comfortable with. Uh, I recently did something for, uh, actually was uh, solicited by um, Future Cities program, mm -hmm, and right. they recently had a their competition, which I think uh, w 
I would, if there is an opportunity to somehow review their lessons learned, that may be something that, particularly in the post-COVID world, we could learn from. But I, I know the one thing that they have is they have the full licensing of teams to be able to do a truly virtual breakout rooms, judging panels, uh, whole day deliberation that was in real time. You're right. The, the, the EBS, the, the, the enterprise system platform that you need for some of these is, is quite extensive. Um, uh, and uh, I know just for doing uh, merit badges with the Boy Scouts, I've upgraded my free personal Zoom account to whatever the first level is to get some more features and get more time and that kind of thing. I am not aware of, Eddie, are you of, of SAME looking at doing a, a, a higher level Teams because we use GoToMeeting and GoToWebinar. Um, and when we do JETC, we're using even a different platform specifically for those large conferences. Um, uh, that they would be looking at a Teams or a Zoom that they would purchase on behalf of all posts to, to subscribe to or anything like that. I'm not aware. I've not heard of anything like that on the board nationally. Have you, Eddie? No, and actually our Teams is only licensed for us to use internally even. We do use right. Teams, but we don't have it licensed to use externally. Uh, something right. like that, you know, um, I mean, we have an annual budgeting process that any COI, you know, and when we get to August, September, Jeff, we can, or Liza will be the, the new chair then, but uh, we can talk about putting in a request for that kind of thing. There's nothing in the books for it right now. Uh, that would be one way that we as a COI could try to drive some of that. The other way is if enough posts came together and either communicated to their RVPs and it got to Jill as the post relations person, um, you know, to have the society can contemplate it as just a, a tool in general. It doesn't necessarily need to be for K-12 STEM outreach, but certainly we would benefit from it. Um, you know, I think that it, it's just a matter of critical mass and enough folks asking for it that it's something, we're moving towards big marker I was, for those that joined the call earlier, uh, the, it's the platform we're using for our conferences uh, to do more of the presentation style webinars, uh, you know, the PDH oriented webinars, uh, but that's not as interactive, in my opinion, as GoToMeeting. It's just more, uh, um, it's just better, it's got better fidelity on, on the, like with videos and stuff like that. So, I, I, yeah, I don't really know how to address that. I'd say, Communicate that to your RVP and ask them to take it up the chain, maybe. Okay. I, I think that's a great idea. I know there that whole discussion occurred a number of years ago on online registration for just your local posts luncheons or uh, your local post golf outing and and uh, you know some people were using uh, Star Star Chapter Chapter Star or whatever it's called. Some people were using Eventbrite. Some people were using Reg Online. And, and should SAME as a whole come up with a system, you know, right now we're, we are finally hosting everybody's website. Uh, so it's sammy.org slash Kitty Hawk versus Sammy Kitty Hawk, SAME Kitty Hawk post.org or whatever. So, um, yeah, I think up the RVP chain. However, if we're looking for something or we find something that works great for encouraging posts to do their own STEM competition day uh, and we find the right thing that we want to share uh, that we could drive it through the COI. Um, I think that's a little further off and maybe we'll be past the pandemic before we get there. But as we're going to find out, as we're going to see with JETC and a lot of things, the new normal isn't going to be the old normal. We're always going to have a, a virtual hybrid component because those guys from Kadena can't travel or whatever. They won't get the full benefit of those of us who show up in person, but but they'll still be able to participate and, and we will still probably do more virtual events than we ever have in the past, even when we can get together. Um, I think that's all I have. I appreciate everyone's time. I appreciate everyone's input. This was a, this was a great call. I hope you, you guys got something out of it there. Um, uh, I think my last slide is basically just uh, thank you all for participating. And uh, uh, now we're going to have to skip that. We're out of time here. Uh, 
As always, if you have an idea for something for STEM Corner or for a future presentation on one of these calls, uh, let me know. And uh, we're always looking for more interaction, more people talking besides me. Um, and if you got some great stuff your post is doing, um, Omaha, I'm coming for you. We need we need <laughs> we need more information on what you're doing there. So thank you all. Stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, we'll see you next month. Thanks everyone. Bye all. Have a great day.